Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials in differential equations. This is video number 26, or the third video in a subset on separation of variables. Specifically, I'm going to show you an example, or example one, on how we use separation of variables to solve a differential equation. There are two videos previous to this which are relevant. In video 24, I discussed the technique of solving differential equations using separation of variables, a very important and powerful technique, which we'll begin using here. In video 25, I showed you how to use a characteristic equation and how in general to solve, or how to get the general solution, excuse me, of a second order homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficients. So what I've done is I've set out some boundary conditions for Laplace's equation in the bottom left of your screen. So we say that b is equal to zero at y is equal to zero, b is equal to zero at y is equal to a, v is equal to v sub 0 at x is equal to 0 and v goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. So we're saying that the function v, a function of x and y, satisfies Laplace's equation. So what we're going to do now is very quickly apply separation of variables in order to solve this. So what we say is that v a function of x and y can be assumed to be written as the product of a function only of x and only a function of y which makes our Laplace's equation go from a partial differential equation to an ordinary differential equation. So we need to take the second derivative. So we get, using the product rule on the right side, x double prime y plus x y double prime. And we know that's equal to zero because we need to satisfy Laplace's equation. And we can rewrite this, if we like, as the following. Now in video number 25, I discussed why we need to give this, why this is equal to a constant. And we call the constants the separation constant. And usually we give the placeholder k for it. Because later on we take a square root, I usually call it k squared, just for aesthetics. And sometimes it can be plus k, sometimes it can be minus k. And now in this particular case, we'll see that we'll be using both plus and minus k. So in actual fact, it doesn't matter. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as plus k. And that leaves us with two ordinary differential equations, namely x double prime minus k squared x is equal to 0, and y double prime plus k squared y is equal to 0. So solving these equations is very straightforward, and I discussed that in video number 25. So I'd like to just discuss, first of all, equation number 1. So if you watched video number 25, you know that the solutions to equation number one are real exponentials. So we're going to get e to the plus or minus k times x. That will be the solution. So, so we next need to consider what is the general solution. So capital X of x, the general solution is going to be a constant times a particular solution of x, x1 I'm going to call it, and b times plus b times another particular solution of x, like this. And we need to plug in the two particular solutions. If you notice here, e to the plus kx is a particular solution, and so is e to the, and so is e to the minus kx. So we plug them in like this. So what we get is our general solution for our x equation number 1 as a times e to the kx plus b times e to the minus kx. Very simple. Now, it's not so simple, well, it's, well, in one respect it is, in some respects it is, excuse me, with the, with the y equation, perhaps it's even simpler. So we, with the y equation, the general solution, or uh, the, the solution is going to be cosine and sine. So if we look at it, we'll say y, a function of y, we're going to get cosine, we're going to get cosine of plus kx, and let's say actually plus or minus ky, plus or minus ky, and we need to add to sine plus or minus ky. Let's say they're the two solutions. I'm going to take away the plus for the moment. They're the two solutions. So in order to get the general solution for y, we need to add a cos ky plus b sine ky. Right, notice what we have here is we have one particular solution 
this is the positive solution for y that's y, y positive particular and then we add to this the other solution so the other solution is going to have the negative case so ab let's call it c cos of minus k, ky plus d sine minus ky like this that is the general solution now we're going to see that it can become a lot simpler because the cos of a minus number is the same as the cos of a positive number. So we already have the cos of the positive number, so let's just get rid of the cos of the negative number. It makes no difference. Now, the sine of a negative number is minus the sine of a positive number. But we can absorb this minus sign in the coefficient, d. And if we, if we absorb it in the coefficient, we may as well absorb it in the coefficient, b, up here. So that means, provided we select the coefficients correctly, we can also get rid of the sine solution. Now, don't get confused here. While, although in the x case, we had a e to the plus kx plus b e to the minus kx, so we have two terms. And in the y case, we also have two terms. That doesn't mean that while a e to the kx is a solution and a e to the minus kx is a solution, it doesn't mean that cos is a solution or sine is a solution. What it means is the sum of cos and sine is a solution. Okay, it might sound, it might maybe I'm overplaying it, but I think it's important nonetheless. So now we know what the solutions are. We can we can write the general solution for for v. So v a function of x and y is going to be a times e to the plus kx plus b times e to the minus kx and we also need to mul that multiply that by c times let's say the cos of k times y plus d times the sine the sine of k times y so that is the general solution to our equation so this solves Laplace's equation in two dimensions and all of your problems will look the same up to this point in two dimensions at the very least when you're solving Laplace's equation. Where they get different or where they differ is when you apply the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions are written on the bottom left of your uh, of your screen. So we need to start applying those. First of all let's look at boundary condition 4. It says that v goes to, v goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. So let's just look at the x solution here. So we have a times e to the plus kx and we have to add to that b times e to the minus kx. And what we do is we plug in the value for x. So x goes to infinity. Well, as x goes to infinity, this term here is going to go to zero, but the term on the left is also going to go to infinity. Now we need our mathematical solutions to also correspond to physical reality. So physical reality can't have anything going to infinity. What that means is that is that the term on the left must go to zero. Now, if it's to go to zero, either a is zero or e to the kx is zero. But k can't be zero, because k if k is zero, all of the solution is zero. Similarly, if x is zero, well, we can't have that because x has to be able to, to vary as well. So we get rid of the exponential because we know that cannot be zero. And we're left with a is equal to zero. So that means we're able to remove this part from our equation. Next, we look at boundary condition one. It says that v is equal to zero at y is equal to zero. So this time we look at c times the cos of k times zero or ky plus d times the sine of ky. Now the sine of naught is naught this the sine of naught is not so this is supposed to go to zero like this but the cos of naught is one what that means is that c is equal to zero so we can re remove the cosine term so we're, we're making progress we're, we're killing quite a few terms so far now 
we have two constants multiplied by each other, you may as well get rid of one of them, just keep keep the other. Because fine, if you're if you're if you're really solving this, you'd have to keep track of the constants, but we're not, we're only showing you in theory how to do it. So we just we just ignore the constants like that. Now we need to apply the second boundary condition, which says that v is equal to zero at y is equal to a. And now this is implying that we're on the that x is equal to zero also. So x goes zero goes to zero. All we have is the sign uh, the sign of a k a is equal to zero. Now the only way that this can happen is if k a is equal to n pi. Now why is that? Well, because pi pi is either so we have this is zero and two pi. This is pi. So we know that the sine of naught is naught, or the sine of 180 is naught. So every time we go pi on the unit circle, we go back to naught. So that means that k is equal to n pi over a. And of course, that works for the value of k in, in the exponential as well. It has to work. So we've now found our solution. So we can rewrite the whole thing as v a function of x and y is equal to a constant, let's call it a, e to the, e to the minus kx, and we need to multiply it by this sine of ky. Well, we know that k is equal to n pi over a, and k goes from 1, 2, 3, and all the way up to whatever. But k is not allowed to be 0. I mean, that's a that's a very important distinction k is not allowed to be equal to zero so note that we have an infinite number of solutions but that we don't have a solution at x is equal to zero because unless if we look at if we look at boundary condition number three so unless v zero happens to have the form sine n pi y over a or k a whatever it is for some integer n we simply can't fit the final boundary condition at x is equal to zero. So it seems like we're stuck, but we're not. And the reason we're not stuck is the beauty of the Fourier series. And I'll show you where we get that now. So we know that Laplace's equation, the solutions to Laplace's equation are linear, which means if you add solutions, they are also a solution. So let's say we have v1 plus v2. They are two particular, solu they are two particular solutions. Well, we know, of course, that their sum is also a solution. This is be maybe a general solution. So that means we can write any solution as the sum of other solutions, provided we add enough of them. So that means this. If we have v, it's a function of x and y, we have a constant multiplied by a particular solution v1, v times a particular solution v2, and whatever, the whole way up to as many solutions as you like. So we just can keep adding solutions because it's it's it because the li the linearity of Laplace's equation. So how does this help us? It helps us because v a function of x and y is going to be equal to the following. If we we can rewrite this equation as an infinite sum, n is equal to one to infinity, and it's going to be the constants c sub n. So in this case, it would be a, b, c, whatever it is times e to the minus n pi x over a. So that's where you plugged in the value of k and multiplied by sine n pi y over k or sine n pi y over a. Notice it's looking like a Fourier series except we have this, this exponential term which seems to be a bit of a pain. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to see, does this solution help us at x is equal to zero, the place we couldn't get it to fit earlier on? Because we know that x is equal to zero, we, we should be getting um, x is equal to zero, we should be getting v is equal to v zero. So what do we do? Well, let's plug in x is equal to zero here. So we get v, and we plug in zero, and we plug in y. Well, if we plug that in, we're going to get our, our series again. And the series is going to be c sub n 
which is not is 1, so I get rid of that. And we're going to have left sine n pi y over a. Notice that this is a Fourier sine series. So in order to get the coefficients, sorry, in order to get b at x is equal to 0, we need to work out the Fourier sine series. Now, the next thing we need to do is this. We need to work out somehow to calculate the coefficients. So let me rewrite what I had up here. I had v at 0 and y was equal to the infinite sum. I'll leave out the details. Oh, we'll put in the details. Put in the details where n is equal to 1 to infinity of the coefficients sine n pi y over a. Now, I suppose. If you look at the properties of cosines and sines, you'll find that they are that the property is called uh, orthonormality, and it means that they are orthogonal, I suppose, in a mathematical sense. So I'm not really going to prove that now. I'm sure you've seen it in the past. But if you pr perform the following integral, let's say we integrate it from zero to a. But what we do is we multiply both sides by the following. This is, uh, by the way, that's v zero. So we have v zero, a function of y. And we multiply both sides by the integral of sine m pi y over a. For obviously m is not the same as n. And we integrate that dy. And we do it on the other side as well. So we're going to have the sum. We're going to have the coefficients. We're going to have the integral. Then we're going to have the sine n pi y over a. And I need to multiply that, even though I can't write it on the same line, sine m pi y over a integrated dy. Now, the property of orthonormality says that this is equal to 0 all the time. And the only time it's non-zero is if m is equal to n. All right, And if m is equal to n, it's equal to 1. So if this, or when this happens, excuse me, what we'll get on the left-hand side is we'll get the left-hand side is equal to cn, just just the cn. The sum will disappear because there's only one value for which this is non-zero, and therefore we no longer have a sum. So what I can do is get rid of all of this because there's only one point that this integral will be non-zero. And let's call it, well, cm, cn, it doesn't matter. Provide that now they're, they're the same value at this stage. This should be sine. I got deleted there. And we can rearrange it such that cn is equal to 2 over a. Sorry, cn, should have said this, times a over 2. That was the integral, excuse me. Uh, 2 over a, the integral. And we're going to have v0 multiplied by sine n pi y over a. And don't worry about whether it's an m or an n. At this stage, they're equal. It doesn't matter what you call it. And this allows us to write the full solution. v, a function of x and y, is this rather painful thing you're about to see here. It's going to be equal to this plugged in here. multiplied by the sum n is equal to 1 to infinity of e to the minus n pi x over a sine n pi y over a. And that's the general solution. And that is the solution which fits the boundary conditions. Rather painful, but rather straightforward nonetheless. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and might also give me a comment in the box below.